Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going into more detail about prostaglandins, specifically learning about some biochemistry and pharmacology associated with these molecules. All right, let's get to it. Hello everybody. Today we have another lesson about prostaglandins, but this time we're going to be focusing on the biochemistry and pharmacology associated with these molecules. If you haven't watched my last video about prostaglandins, definitely make sure to check it out. It'll be linked up here and also in the description below. That video will help you get more of an overview of prostaglandins, what they are, and their role in the human body. All right, let's get started. First, let's go over the goals of today's lesson. We're first gonna talk about how prostaglandins are synthesized. So where do they come from? Next, we'll talk about the differences between the enzymes COX-1 and COX-2. And lastly, we'll learn about what drugs target prostaglandins. So let's start with prostaglandin synthesis. The home base for where prostaglandins are coming from is going to be the phospholipid bilayer cell membrane. So as you can see here, uh, contained within the membrane is an important molecule, and that is arachidonic acid. So the enzyme phospholipase A2 will uh, extract this molecule from the lipid bilayer, uh, and we can also produce arachidonic acid from free diacylglycerol. So right here, this is the structure of arachidonic acid. Now, arachidonic acid is probably the most important precursor in the prostaglandin synthesis pathway to know about. Because from here, an enzyme called cyclooxygenase, or COX, uh, will produce the first prostaglandin, prostaglandin G2, or PGG2. So there are different versions of the COX enzyme. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but COX is actually the colloquial name that we give to the enzyme that's more for formally referred to as prostaglandin endoperoxide synthase. So once we produce this first prostaglandin, this will be further modified into a panoply of different prostaglandins. Uh, the first step being turning uh, this carbon right here, uh, adding a hydroxyl group there. Uh, but we can produce a variety of different ones from this starting PGD2. So here's the structure of prostaglandin G2, uh, and I want to compare it to arachidonic acid. So the structure of arachidonic acid, we can kind of think of it as an eyeball-less fish head uh, with two tails. So right here, this is the head of the fish, and then here are the two tails. And then once the enzyme COX uh, acts on it, it adds the two different eyeballs right here, uh, which are oxygen atoms. Uh, so you can see here, here's our lovely fish with the eyes, uh, which is our first prostaglandin, PGG2. All right, to recap the synthesis of prostaglandins, we start with the phospholipid membrane. Phospholipase A2 produces arachidonic acid, and then the enzyme COX acts on arachidonic acid to produce the first prostaglandin, PGG2. So I mentioned that there are different versions of the COX enzyme. And those are COX-1 and COX-2. Structurally, these enzymes are very similar, but there are some important functional differences to know about. Starting with COX-1, we generally uh, consider this version to be the housekeeping uh, enzyme. And by that, we mean that it's constitutively expressed, uh, meaning it's on in the cells all the time, and it plays important uh, homeostatic roles. Uh, probably the most important one to know about being its role in the GI tract, uh, where it plays a role in cytoprotection. Uh, and by that, we mean it helps protect against damage from stomach acid or other damaging agents. And one way it does that is by promoting uh, mucus secretion within the tract. COX-2, on the other hand, is not on all the time, but it's readily inducible by things like stress or cytokines, which are inflammatory molecules. And the prostaglandins produced from the COX-2 pathway play a role in things like pain and inflammation. Uh, so when we think about 
things that we want to target with medication, uh, the COX-2 pathway is generally what we want to focus on because of the pain and inflammation here. All right, now that we know the differences between COX-1 and COX-2, we can talk about the pharmacology. And the two important class of drugs we're going to talk about are the non-selective COX inhibitors and the selective COX-2 inhibitors. So let's start with the non-selective ones. So these include a lot of the older NSAIDs. Uh, and by NSAID, we mean non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. And these are medications like ibuprofen and aspirin. Because they're non-selective, they block both the COX-1 and the COX-2 pathway. Uh, so COX-1, if you remember, plays a role in housekeeping and protecting the GI tract. Uh, and COX-2 is the pain and inflammation that we generally want to target. So because it blocks the COX-1 pathway, it will cause GI distress and complications. So potentially things like peptic ulcers. So if you've ever taken ibuprofen or aspirin and had stomach cramps, uh, this is the reason for that, because we are also blocking the COX-1 uh, pathway with the GI side of protection. And long-term, that can lead to things like peptic ulcers. Um, so even though we address the pain and inflammation, because we are blocking COX-2, we also get the adverse effects from blocking the COX-1 pathway as well. Now we'll turn our attention to the selective COX-2 inhibitors. These are drugs that end in the suffix coxib. So medications like silicoxib or lumiracoxib. And so because they are selective for COX-2, they target pain and inflammation without the risk of peptic ulcers. So generally, uh, these will be favored because of the lower risk profile. All right, that's a wrap on the biochemistry and pharmacology on prostaglandins. Let's summarize what we learned today. First, we learned that prostaglandins are synthesized from arachidonic acid via the enzyme cyclooxygenase. Next, we learned that COX-1 is responsible for housekeeping functions like GI protection, while COX-2 is more attributed to pain and inflammation. And finally, we learned that non-selective COX inhibitors can cause GI complications like peptic ulcers while selective COX-2 inhibitors have lower risk. All right, thank you so much everyone for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.